In this first demo, we'll show you how to use Web Vitals to find the slowest pages in your application and how to improve those pages using tracing and profiling. We'll drill down from performance scores to traces to the code responsible for performance bottlenecks. Let's get to it. Here's our new Web Vitals product. What I'm showing you here is real Web Vitals data collected from our own Sentry front-end web app. On the top left here, you see the Sentry performance score, which is a score out of 100 that represents the overall performance of your application. The score is calculated by weighting the values of these individual Web Vital metrics. If you're familiar with Lighthouse and Lighthouse scores, you might know that the Lighthouse score is calculated by measuring the performance of your app in a lab environment. This performance score is not a Lighthouse score, but it is calculated in a similar way, except using production data from real users using your application on their own web browsers. On the right here, you see a breakdown of the score into components, and you can see how each of these components changes over time. Below that, you have a summary of all of these web vitals, LCP, FCP, FID, CLS, and TTFB. And you can see here that for Sentry, two of these vitals have a good score, and three of them have a poor score. In order to improve our web vital scores, and in turn, improve our overall performance score, we have to improve the performance of individual pages. Here we see a list of the pages in the app alongside their web vital scores and the performance score of each page. We also have this opportunity column on the right, which represents the biggest opportunities to improve your overall performance score. You can see here that this first page with an opportunity score of 11.43 offers the biggest opportunity for us to improve our application's overall performance score. So let's take a look at this page and see what we can do to improve its performance. This page shows an overview of the performance of the page that we selected, and now these performance score widgets show performance score of this page and not the overall application. We can see right away here that this page has a poor LCP score, which means that the user might wait a long time for this page to finish loading. Underneath that, we have a list of individual page load events. These represent real users loading this page in production. For each event, we show the web vitals and we show the performance score for that page load. In this first example, this user had an LCP of 10.4 seconds, which means that they spent a really long time waiting for this page to load. And we can see that reflected here in the performance score, which is a very poor score of 9. Let's dig into a more detailed breakdown of the page load event. Here we see the spans, which are the operations that occur during the page load that may contribute to the 10 second LCP. In this list of spans, LCP is marked here using this red line. The spans that come before LCP are LCP blocking. The spans that come after LCP are not LCP blocking, which means that the biggest optimization opportunities for improving LCP are in the spans that come before this line. If I scroll down here, one thing that stands out to me immediately is that this span, which measures how long it takes to load the JavaScript bundle, is taking around six seconds. If I keep scrolling, I see all of these other resource load spans that are executing in parallel. And if I click into one of them, I can see that it's loading a chunk of the JavaScript bundle. So all of these parallel spans are JS bundle loading, and you can see that it all happens before LCP. So from this, I could say that this application is probably loading a lot of JavaScript, and if we reduce the size of the JavaScript bundle, we would improve LCP. Now, continuing on, I see that these other spans, these long task spans, are emitted when the browser is running some JavaScript code that's blocking the UI thread. And in this case, it's blocking LCP. In particular, I see this long task span that takes almost one second. If I click into this, I can see that we have a profile associated with this here. And if I want to understand what's happening during this long task span, I can just go and look at the profile. So let's do that. So here I'm looking at a profile that was captured from the user's browser in production during this page load. And down here, I can see that it came from a Chromium-based browser running on an Android device. This profile provides us a lot of insight into the JavaScript code that was running in the browser during this 988 millisecond long, long task span. For those unfamiliar with profiling or flame graphs, I'll give a brief overview. The x-axis here represents time, and the y-axis represents the call stack. The root function frames are here at the top, and if I scroll down, the leaf function frames are here at the bottom. Now going back to this long task span, if I focus on the profiling data collected alongside this span, there's a function that stands out. And that's this eCharts React Core.prototype.componentedMount function. 
It takes 558 milliseconds, which is a significant proportion of the overall 988 milliseconds spent on this span. If I go back in time a bit here, I can see that we've rendered other React components, but none of them take quite as much time as this specific component. So from this, I can see that another opportunity to optimize LCP is to focus on this specific React component. And so to recap, we walked through how to debug a performance problem in a browser app, all the way from high-level performance scores down to the code that was responsible.